What's up everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Demon Souls. Finally, mostly done with World 2. I'm out of, I'm at least now out of post commentary. Took a day to uh, to cool off after Flame Lurker and Dragon God. What? Could it be a blacksmith? Demon soul? The demons are powerful spirits. Some can even bless weapons. But doing so requires a powerful flame. The soul of a demon is an inferno of wrath. I told you that I am busy. Each ore has a grade. Mighty weapons can only be blessed by ores of high grade. The highest grade of ores a pure ore that shines in utter brilliance. A spirit force that delights the eyes. <laughs> the highest grade of ores a pure ore that Wait, what? shines in Why does he want to take the soul? Try again. The highest grade of. Hey! Huh. Come back this That's weird. Don't you want the flame lurker's soul, Ed? Yes. Now you can bless your weapon with them. There we go. Hmm. Wise choice. You've done well to put your trust in the great blacksmith, Ed. Bring me a demon soul. And I shall use it to bless your weapon. So now that we've given Ed the Red Hot Demon Soul, we can use that to combine regular items with Demon Souls to create new weapons. For instance, the Great Club here can be used in conjunction with a Swollen Demon Soul, the Adjudicator Soul, to create the Meat Cleaver. That's exactly what we're going to do. So, now I'm here... This is the, uh, the shortcut area that leads down to- ooh! Always roll there. Seems a little dodgy. This is the shortcut area down to Flame Lurker. And it also leads down to Skurver, so since we're in pure white world tendency, Skurver will now show up and- eee! Again! Some of those drops seem a little bit too close for comfort. There's some items there. I think there's a ring of disease resistance. I can't remember what the other item is. I'll come back for those at some point in the future. Not right now, though. You cats! Oh, oh, you nearly frightened me to death, creeping up on me like that. <laughs> My name is Skurva. I s s see treasures of the unknown. I'm impressed you've come this far. Were you guided by a sixth sense or a brash imprudence? Either way, you've more skill than I. Let us put that s skill to work. There is a t t temple beyond here, below the ground. It is a work of art, molded by the ancient p burrowers to appease the bones of, of dragons. As a precaution, a broad sword which can cr crush bone and slay dragon is stored in the temple. Truth told, it is the laughing stock of many a swordsmith. They say it's as blunt as a bludgeon. A d dull blade meant to slay a dragon. Curious, is it not? I would search for it myself, but I I'm afraid I'd fare p poorly against the demons. If you happen to come upon the sword, please let me have a look at it. This place is magnificent, eh? The bones of dragons exuding ore. A dream come true. Everyone talks about how the dragon bones exude ore. I haven't mined any from the bones yet. Picked some up off the floor. Anyway, let's show Stuttering Skurver the Dragonbone Smasher. Wonderful! The arts of swordsmanship applied in a perfectly useless manner. Hmm. Ah. Hmm. Oh, do not mind me. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Please, take this as a small show of thanks. Take care of that sword, will you? She's a beauty. And that's one way you can get a pure greystone, which allows you to upgrade crushing weapons to their maximum level. So now I'll just cut ahead to something else. What is the world like outside the Nexus? With brave souls like you confronting these vile demons. Perhaps it won't be long before things return to normal. At least that is what we are all praying for. You have a heart of gold. I can fo- 
deep inside Stonefang Mine is an ancient dragon burial ground. The bones of the dragons exude ore. All right. So none of the NPCs had anything useful to say, so we'll go right up to the Latria Archstone. Now we can start 3-1 proper. So, I'm kind of not looking forward to doing World 1 of Latria, because the first time I played Demon Souls, I got insanely lost. I should clarify, this isn't... I don't have, I don't possess the burning hatred I feel towards the tunnels in 2-2, but it is a similar sense of just being lost, because what the first level of the Tower of Latria is, it's one, incredibly vertical, and two, it's winding. Winding as hell. And it's also kind of big. And it's full of stuff. So the first time I played Demon Souls, I got so turned around. These octopus headed guards, by the way, can be really nasty. Especially if you're playing a melee character, you want to just kind of wait for them around corners and ambush them as much as possible. So anyway, the first time I played Demon Souls, I got so turned around, particularly trying to find my way back to Freak, who is an NPC we're gonna rescue inside of here, that once I got the key, I... I got back... I managed to get back to the starting archstone, and I even eventually followed a video to Freak, and I must have just taken one simple wrong turn and I was convinced that he had just disappeared, that someone had come by and murdered him or something. I don't know how I managed to walk past him so many times. Uh, since then, I've done Latria a few times, and I usually get a little lost. Even now. Luckily, Latria is interesting. Uh, be warned, though, there might be some pretty giant edits. Uh, I'm gonna link a map of this area in the description in case you're trying to use this LP as a walkthrough. The problem with trying to follow a visual walkthrough of the Tower of Latria, at least World 1, is it is a series of nearly identical floors with a few sparse landmarks to anchor yourself. If you aren't, if you aren't paying attention to the, the plates that tell you which side of the floor you're on and which floor it is, like you'll see Prison of Hope uh, 4F East, which means 4th floor east side. You can kind of just meander around. Best advice is find the path that leads down as soon as possible. On the floor that you start out on, you're gonna have to wander that floor for a few different keys. Eventually, you'll find a key that leads you to the gate that I think if you're coming out of the starting cell where the archstone is, you'll go right and after that, I think you should be able to start going up. Or, I mean, down. That's... Anyway, that's a good general goal to work towards, is you want to find your way down. I think across the way there, you can see uh, Sage Frake's cell. It is glowing, and you want to ambush the, oct the Octopus Guard. Yeah, the D&D &D Mind Flayer. Lottery is so, so interesting, though. You have to appreciate just how atmospheric it is, and that is, that's pretty much what everyone says, but it doesn't make it any less true. Lotria boasts some of the heaviest, thickest, you can cut it with a knife, atmosphere in the whole game. And it is rich, rich with lore. It's also very dark. <laughs> uh, which makes the issue of getting lost uh, a little more problematic. I want to be careful of this guy here. Sometimes you can just walk past him, and he'll stab you in the shoulder and send you careening off the, uh, the broken guardrail there, down plummeting to your death. You have to be pretty systematic about clearing each floor out if you don't want to get too turned around. If you're just going straight to the end, it's not quite so bad, but once you start backtracking, it gets a lot, uh, a lot harder to anchor yourself, like, 
to really get that visual map correct in your head. Uh, I will point out treasure, secrets, all that stuff, but that's probably the, the extent that I'm going to be uh, going about things here. I don't know. Because I did just say be systematic about everything. There are a lot of things that I just can't get in the first level yet. And I'll explain about that in a moment. So yeah, I'll point out the treasure and secrets when I am not exactly sure about how, how to get to them. Like, if I don't remember. The thing about this level that makes it a little bit difficult, it's not the enemies at all. It's... You either acquire spatial reasoning here and navigational skills, or you come into it with those, or you rot here forever, and you become a sad, whimpering husk of a person. Let's see. Yeah, and you get tons of mercury stone here. And it's also one of the ways that the developers are indicating to you that, hey, lots of mercury stone here, the enemies are probably also going to be poisonous, which they are. Another way that the developers indicate to you that there are going to be a lot of enemies who can who have the potential to poison you is that in this level in particular, there are a lot of royal lotus drops. And royal lotus is the one that cures poison. I believe soldier's lotus cures bleeding effects, and widow's lotus cures plague. Okay, so I've already been back here. I think the turn I want to make is up on the left. There it is. Okay, and this, I believe, will let me start backtracking to this to my uh, starting cell since I have the key to unlock the gate next to it. This is... I'm on the opposite side of my starting cell, I think. So, I just want to make sure that I have all these cells cleared out. I don't have any prisoners waiting to ambush me from the open ones. And I don't leave any treasure behind. Now, I believe on the opposite wall is where the gate is. I hear... Oh, never mind. I know who that is. Banging and howling and carrying on like that. That's Lord Ridiel. So I guess I'll start talking a little bit about what is in store for us here. As far as uh, events go and side quests and NPCs. So I already mentioned that Sage Break is imprisoned here in the... Tower of Latria, level 1, 3-1. To rescue Freak is pretty easy. You just need to find a key that uh, is going to show up later in the level, much, much later. Probably in the next episode. As far as uh, Lord Ridiel goes, the other guy who's in prison here, who we need to rescue for a side quest, we need to get pure white world tendency in this world, and then we need to get a key from world 3-2 to come back here to rescue Lord Ridiel. And the key, again, only shows up in Pure White World Tendency in 3-2. Also, another Pure White World Tendency event for this level in particular, there is a little bit of debris around Lord Ridiel's area, and... That debris is cleared out if you come back here in Pure White World Tendency, but we haven't seen that yet. The Iron Maidens around here, some of them contain prisoners who, as soon as you open them up, they will just come out swinging and poison you right away. Unless you... I, I'm not sure if Poison Resistance actually blocks the ones from the Iron Maiden. There's... Once you open that up, there's no way of getting around getting hit at least once because you'll still be in the opening animation for the Iron Maiden before you get the chance to block the prisoner will already have escaped and hit you but it's not all of it's not every single Iron Maiden I'm tr really struggling to remember which ones contain a trap and which ones just contain items like the one back there contained a stone of ephemeral eyes which again always, always appreciated, because the more stones of ephemeral eyes I have, the more pure black world tendency events I can do easily. And I don't know if I've explained this already, I'll just say it again real quick, if, in case I did. Um, the easiest way of getting to pure black 
world tendency in the world is to suicide and body form over and over again. And the stone, the stones of ephemeral lies let you do that really easily. Because once you use a stone of ephemeral lies, it puts you back in body form from soul form. So you can just find a level that has a pitfall very early on, commit suicide, respawn at the art stone, use a stone of ephemeral eyes and you're back in body form, and you can just do it over and over again. Now that path back there, that's where I want to go, and that's a dead end, just right path, past there. This is where you want to go to continue progressing. I think this is an Iron Maiden trap with a guy in it. I'm going to open it anyway. No, I think it's the other one in here that has someone in it. be very thorough about things. Oh, wow. Ooh. I like this armor set. This armor set, I believe, has poison resistance. It's much, much lighter than the Mirrodin armor. Or Mirrodin. Not sure how you pronounce that. It's the Temple Knight starting armor. For now, though, I'll just put the mask on, since we've gone without a helmet for so, so long. Not a helmet, but it counts as one. Gives us a little bit of magic defense, a little bit of poison defense, a little bit of physical defense. There's the fucker that'll poison me. This is why off screen I bought the antidote miracle. Oh, also some of my other preps off screen or off camera that I didn't waste your time showing you. I upgraded the dragon longsword to plus four. That's why it's doing so, so much damage. I mean, it already does, it does 180, 81, I think? Half fire, half physical. Just with the base upgrade, plus one. I also made my purple flame shield plus four, so it has higher guard break reduction now. I almost didn't have enough strength for the dragon bone smasher, but just barely made the requirement for that. Requires 30 total strength to hold in one hand. If I dual hand it though, I only need 15 strength because it cuts the requirement in half. I have the key for this now. Not part of my, my off-screen preparations, just thought I'd throw that in there. But, either way, I have a different toy that I want to play with for now. That's not the Dragon Bone Smasher. I'm sure that will get its fair share of attention as I play through the game. And yeah, bought the Antidote Miracle, have that equipped. But, rather save my magic. Actually, no, because I have Water Veil and Antidote equipped. And I know I'm not going to need Water Veil here. Ooh, sneaky guy, aren't you? Doesn't matter, though. You get so much Royal Lotus that... Unless you're pretty much just using the Royal Lotus in front of enemies and waiting for them to re-poison you, you're not going to burn through all of it. So it doesn't matter if you use Antidote or Royal Lotus. It's all good. All good in the hood. <laughs> uh, it was dumb. The other... You heard... Momentarily ago... There was another NPC who was singing. Lord Ridiel, you can always hear banging on his cell door and shouting for someone to let him out. I want to come back up here just for a second. Sage Break doesn't actually do anything as far as making noise. He just glows a bit. The NPC you heard singing just now is the merchant for the area. There's an octopus head guard behind this door. I'm waiting for the patrol. Oh, shit. She saw me. So these guys... I haven't talked about why they're so nasty. This is one of the reasons why. They have, uh, let's see, four big attacks. They have the two things that you just saw. They have that kind of electrified green ball that they slowly shoot at you. You can dodge roll through that with the invincibility frames, or you can roll around that. Preferably, you just don't... You close the distance and start whacking away at the octopus guards before they get a chance to do anything. If the, the electrified green orb hits you, it paralyzes you for quite a long time. And usually they take that time to saunter up to you and give you the kiss of death. Which is a slimy tendril right through the back of the mouth. There are other two attacks. From long range, they'll fire 
fairly damaging soul arrows at you. And they will also... Let's see. What's the other one? Oh! They'll also do a really, really annoying sound wave attack. Oh shit, 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 shitting... Oh god. Woo! Yeah, um... I should mention that this place is full of nasty pitfalls. And that was, uh, one of the rare, rare instances of mercy that the Tower of Latria and Demon Souls in general shows you, in that when you go down that pitfall, it only kicks you back to the floor that you started on. Every other pitfall in this area is gonna kill you. So, don't die to pitfalls. Don't do it. Don't be stupid and run, especially in the areas where you know that the, the floor is broken. Man, ugh, I'm so lucky that wasn't one of the other, like, later in the level. Those ones will kill you. Just gonna go ahead and take my good fortune and work my way back to where I was. Um, while I'm backtracking after the, uh, luckily non-lethal fall... Just gonna go ahead and cut that out, and we'll start, I guess, the next episode where I fell, so we can, uh, make some nice, even progress. And I guess I'll finish the first level of the Tower of Latria in the next episode. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, take it easy, have a good one.